502, and welcome to this uh, regularly called meeting of the Simple City Council. Um, please rise as Mayor Pro Tem Judy Morales leads in the invocation, which will be followed by our pledge, which will be led by City Secretary Jana Lou Ellis. practical actions to continue as we improve our community. Encourage us, we pray, by showing us ways our work is bearing fruit and is pleasing to you. Continue to bless and protect our leaders nationally and locally, our mayor, our city council, city staff, our police, our fire, and all those who work tirelessly to serve. Father, may your love and compassion flow to us and to those around us Give us concern for those who are suffering. Give us the compassion and empathy we need to understand what those in our community are going through. Help us to love them and help us not to judge or condemn, but rather come to, alongside them to offer support. Let us be your hands and your feet. Lord, we continue to pray for our country's safety. We ask you to bless all the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, and all healthcare workers who are helping those suffering from COVID-19 illness and all illnesses, keep them safe. Thank you for the vaccine that may help keep the spread of the virus and save lives. And Lord, we thank you for being the source of all wisdom and for being willing to impart that wisdom to your people. Show us your will during this time of history for our nation. Do not let our wisdom be clouded by earthly considerations or misunderstandings. We know your wisdom is pure, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, good fruits, impartial, and sincere. Help us to recognize that wisdom and exercise it in our decisions that will benefit our nation, our country, and our city. Thank you, Father, for your love. We ask all this in your Holy Son's precious name, Jesus. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Both very much. Now we come to the uh, time in our meeting for public comments. Citizens who desire to address the council on any matter may do so. Uh, as long as you signed up prior to this meeting. Public comments will be received uh, during this time. We ask that you please limit those comments to three minutes and no discussion or final action will be taken by the city council. We do have uh, one citizen who signed up to speak. That's Mr. James Furch. Would you please state your name and address for the record. All right, I feel like this is beating a dead horse. I have been in discussions with the city of Temple since December of 2020 to repair the bricks on the side of the building from the trash trucks hitting um, that had been happening since 2010. Didn't realize that could file for the city of Temple until December of 2020. I have been told that there was no evidence of trucks hitting the building, even after showing the city attorney Catherine pictures, which I did. I have videos showing your, your employees looking at the dumpsters, looking at the wall, everything. There's much more evidence than you need. So she basically said the city is not responsible. My question is, why move the dumpsters to a different area that are not against the building? The city is not taking responsibility for the damages. Why move it? It's not hitting it. The city's not responsible. Why move the dumpsters to a different location? Why would the adjuster for the city of the city admit that the damages occurred from a trash truck? I know lots of people who work for the city and have been told that the city has fired seven to eight trash trucks 
subscribers in the past eight months. Why is that? Because they have damaged property. To me, it's a failure to properly train your employees. Training doesn't consist of taking someone out on a route one time and say, go get them, Tiger. Best of luck. I own a commercial cleaning company. I train my employees at least a couple weeks at a time. I know firsthand some of your trash truck drivers, and that's that y'all's way of training people. Um, so based off my research, property damage crimes in Texas for private citizens, if that was me, damaged piece of property. I could get anywhere from 180 days in jail, $2,000 fine, or it can go up to first degree felony. So since the city doesn't want to take responsibility, are you saying it's the driver who should go to jail and be sued? I know you're not gonna say anything. I'm gonna go off the emails. So I had a bid, which took my time to get somebody to come do a bid. And it was $145,000 for the damages to be repaired on the side of the road. The next closest person was over 200,000. They're doing the professional. So it's not somebody sitting here just winging. 200,000. Go off me $5,000 yesterday to fix my bid. My bid, that doesn't even cover the same in water on the side of that building. So we need to know what's the next step. Somebody needs to address me tomorrow because I've had enough of you. You know, lip service. The um, lady from your insurance company basically told me she's going on vacation for the next two years. But she also told me my time's running out for as far as getting this adjustment. Catherine tells me in our meeting that I should do an open records request. The day of our meeting, I went down and filed the open records request for all the utilities that we've done in the town. She denied it. Basically, just flat out denied my request to have any records for open records. Why tell me that if you're not going to sit down and let me do it? You have something to hide? That's all I got to say. But this isn't over. Thank you, Mr. Furch. Moving on to the next item, which is item number three. Uh, item is the uh, first and final reading in a public hearing for the consideration for the consideration and action with respect to the ninth supplemental ordinance, the master ordinance establishing the city of Temple, Temple Utility System Revenue Financing Program related to the issuance of the city of Temple, Texas Utility System Revenue Bonds Series 2021A. Also read in item number four, which is uh, the first reading and uh, final reading in a public hearing for the consideration and action with respect to the 10th supplemental ordinance to the master ordinance establishing the city of Temple, Texas United, sorry, city of Temple, Texas utility system revenue financing program. The bond shall be issued in one or more series in an aggregate principal amount, not to exceed $30 million, which does not include any premiums for the purpose of uh, one, refunding the, refunding the refunded obligations and two, paying the cost of issuing such bonds. Ms. Bernard. Thank you, Paula, could you advance the next slide, please? Uh, Mayor, as you just read, we have two bond items. Uh, the first is a utility system revenue bond series 2021A. That is actually new money for uh, projects. And number the second item, which is um, supplemental ordinance number 10 is a uh, delegation authority to refunds and bonds. Next slide, please. Uh, on the first, uh, Adam, the award of the sale uh, this morning, we took bids for these bonds. Uh, the they, um, utility system revenue bonds, they, pro they were to fund project funds of $29 million for utility system improvements. 
Uh, they're paid for with water and wastewater revenues. Uh, the current rates plus the proposed volumetric rate increase for FY 2022 will support the payment of these bonds. And that uh, proposed rate increase is 0.25 cents on water uh, volumetric rate per 1,000 gallons and the wastewater volumetric rate per 1,000 gallons. Uh, and that, that doesn't only support this bond issue, it supports operations too. The average annual debt service on the 29 million in uh, project funds is $1.7 million. Delivery of the funds will uh, occur on August 26, 2021. Next slide, please. Uh, just a list of the projects that uh, we'll be funding, just to highlight the first few. Uh, Knob Creek Interceptor Improvements Phase 1 of $7.4 million. Williamson Creek Interceptor uh, Improvements of five point, close to $5.3 million. And the design of the uh, Dozier wastewater plant expansion, uh, $3 million. And then various uh, utility improvements associated with TCIP projects. And then some uh, also um, uh, elevated uh, storage tank rehab. And you can read down the list. Next slide, please. Uh, that second item, which is the delegation authority for refunding bonds, uh, the parameters of that delegation uh, include its delegation to the director of finance or city manager. The not to exceed par amount is $30 million. The minimum net, pres uh, net present value savings cannot be less than 3%. The maximum maturity of the bonds cannot exceed August 1, 2044. And this delegation ordinance and the refunding allows the city to save money on borrowing costs. Next slide, please. And just currently there's two uh, outstanding bond issues that are refunding ca candidates. And if we, this analysis was just run uh, in the last few days, but the gross uh, looking at the, the uh, maturities on the bonds, the interest rates in the market, and looking at refunding those with taxable bonds. Uh, the gross present value debt service savings uh, would be, and doing that at net present value, is over $3 million, close to $3.1 million. Uh, the net present value benefit of 3.1. Net present value um, as a percent is and remember in the parameter it uh, can't be below 3%. On this one, it currently calculates to be 12.6%. So um, pretty significant savings to, uh, on this refund. Uh, next slide, please. And at this point, as I mentioned uh, this morning, the bids were open at 9.30. Uh, now I have a uh, joining us via the Zoom is Dan Wegmiller, the financial advisor for the city, and also uh, mm -hmm. Carol Palumbo, bond counsel. Next slide, please, Alan. At this time, I would like to introduce Dan and ask him to go over the bid summary. Great. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Mayor, counsel, Dan Wegmiller with Specialized Public Finance. Uh, as Tracy said, bids came in this morning. Uh, the bonds are rated AA. That's an affirmation of your existing bond rating on the utility. Um, it is a very strong rating um, as you have across the board for the city of Temple. Uh, they note in their rating assessment that it is a reflection of good conservative financial management practices, moderate debt levels, and extremely strong liquidity and reserves. Um, the bids, as you can see on the screen, you received 10 bids, uh, BOK Financial Securities out of uh, Dallas and Oklahoma is the low bidder at 1.737247% to be exact. And um, as you can see, all, really they were all pretty tight uh, within 10 or 12 basis points and generally speaking. So it was a, a very strong market, very strong day, and uh, we'd recommend accepting the bid of BOK Financial Securities. Uh, 
Thank you, Dan. Uh, you at, bet. This, at this time, I'd like to ask Carol Palumbo with um, Bond Council to go over um, just a few points in the bond ordinances. Next slide, please, Ellen. Sure. Good evening. This is Carol Palumbo with McCall Parkhurst. Uh, the ninth supplement, as uh, Tracy has described, is the new money uh, issuance. Um, the ordinance has been um, populated uh, today with the winning bidder information with interest rates and uh, other uh, provisions related to awarding the bonds to the winning bidder. Um, the uh, main covenant in the uh, utility ordinances for the city council uh, to consider is the fact that you are agreeing to set rates sufficient to pay debt service on the bonds. Um, the tenth supplemental, as uh, Tracy uh, described, does authorize um, potential refunding if the delegation is good for a year period. Uh, obviously, uh, Tracy and Dan will work together to figure out the best time in the market, uh, considering um, for uh, refinancing for savings. But uh, should should the refunding not occur within that year, that ordinance expires, and we would have to come back to council for further uh, authorization. Uh, but I'm happy to to answer any questions you may have on either ordinance. Thank you, Carol. There are uh, no comments from council. Then I will uh, I'll open the public hearing on items three and four. Anyone wishing to speak on these items may do so. We ask that you step to the podium, state your name and address. Uh, for the record, or please raise your hand on the virtual platform. Okay. Mr. Wegmiller and Ms. Palumbo, thank you for your uh, help this evening. And um, at this time, I will close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion on item number three. Make a motion to approve item three. We have a motion by council member Walker. We have a second by mayor pro tem Morales. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item number three passes four votes to zero. Um, I will now entertain a motion on item number four. Mayor, I move for adoption by item number four as presented. Second. I have a motion by council member Williams, uh, second by council member Walker. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item four passes four votes to zero. Moving on to item number five is to consider adopting a resolution authorizing the council to place a proposed, a proposal to adopt a tax rate of 64 cents on August 13th, 2021, which will be a special call council meeting. Ms. Bernard. Oh, you're right, I'm sorry. Jana even gave me notes to do that. Sorry, Jana. Uh, moving uh, to item number six is a public hearing to conduct a public hearing to receive comments on the proposed tax rate of 64 cents for $100 valuation for fiscal year 2022, which is the 2021 tax year. Item number seven is the first reading in a public hearing to consider adopting an ordinance approving the tax roll and authorizing calculation of the amount of tax that can be determined for all real and personal property in the city for the fiscal year 2022, which is tax year 2021. And item number eight is the first reading in a public hearing to consider adopting an ordinance setting a tax rate of 60, 64 cents per $100 valuation comprised of 30.3 cents for maintenance in operations and 33.7 cents for debt service for fiscal year 2022, which again is tax year 2021, and making the appropriation for the regular operation of the city of Temple. Ms. Bernard. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, as you just read, Mayor, we have uh, four items related to the budget and tax rate. 
uh, on the agenda tonight. The, and I have uh, several slides to go over that. Just talking about that uh, process, the budget and tax rate adoption process, uh, the timelines for the required meeting dates, the publications, the notices, the motion language, all of that is governed by state statute through uh, the tax code and truth and taxation, and also by the city charter. Uh, there's several rates that in the recent uh, passage of Senate Bill 2 of some of the uh, various tax rates, they've changed the name of some, changed the way they are calculated. But this uh, just goes over those various tax rates. Our last year's tax rate was 0.6525 as a uh, proposed tax rate for this year to support the budget is 0.64 cents per hundred dollar valuation. No new revenue tax rate is 0.6090. And no new revenue rate is the rate if you tax the same properties in both years that would generate what it rate it would take to generate the revenue if you tax properties in the same same properties in both tax years. Um, the notice and hearing rate is the no new revenue tax rate, uh, and then the voter approval tax rate uh, for the city of Temple this year is 0.6606. And just to note, that does include um, unused increments from the prior year of 1.62 cents. And then again, this year, the proposed rate is below the one year voter approval rate. And with the voter approval tax rate, um, it's the highest rate that the city made out without going before the voters um, in order to uh, have an election to limit the rate that may be Approved. Um, next slide is, is important. The proposed tax rate is in two components, the M&O, which supports the maintenance and operations of the general fund, and the debt service, which is um, M&O for is 30.303 cents, and the proposed debt service rate is uh, 0 .33 point, or 0.33.70, for a total tax rate of 64 cents. Looking at the proposed tax rates, what it would be um, if a senior citizen 65 and over uh, homeowner, there is no additional taxes that would be paid with this rate uh, because the taxes are capped. A $100,000 home with no increase in value, actual taxes for the year for City of Temple would decrease by $12.50 or $1.04 a month. And then if you look at a, what's considered that uh, the appraisal district issues, the average taxable home value for the uh, temple is 148,000. You compare that to the previous year's average taxable value and it's right around 10% increase. Um, monthly tax impact would be uh, $40.64 per year or 3.39 per month. This um, on the bottom of that one slide, the green on the bottom that needs to be deleted. It's not the hundred thousand. It's the hundred forty-eight thousand average taxable value in Temple. Looking at the city's total tax rate historically, uh, starting back in twenty thirteen, uh, you see the gray is the M and O rate. Uh, the blue <coughs> is the interest in sinking rate. The the lime green is the interest, the TCIP portion of the interest in sinking rate. And then the, I guess, aqua blue is the parks bond for the um, 2015 parks bonds, which was five cents. As you see, it's um, compared to two years ago, it's gone down 3.27 cents. And it supports a major TCIP program. Property tax roll and tax levy, agenda item number seven and eight. Um, uh, ordinance approves the uh, Avalon tax roll that was certified that by the tax appraisal district of $6.6 .6 billion. Uh, that is an increase of 9.3%, 9.30% uh, com compared to prior year. Uh, that's, there's three components there, uh, the city of Temple, 
without reinvestment zone, uh, the frozen taxable value, and then the tax increment district reinvestment zone number one of 609, <coughs> excuse me, 609 million. And that brings it back to the six point, uh, close to $7 billion. Uh, the levy with the uh, proposed tax rate of 64 cents, uh, which is the two components, m and and INS levies uh, for tax or proposed budget 2022, levies taxes of $19.6 million for m and and then interest in sinking is $18,134,309. And the levy for the tax increment district, uh, or RZ number one is three point. $9 million. Just uh, go back over the calendar again. Tonight on your agenda, uh, you, the, there's a council vote on the proposed tax rate that would that establishes the process and procedures in, on the August 13th city council meeting, special call meeting at uh, nine o'clock, 8.30, 8.30 uh, for the final public hearing and adoption of the FY 2021 budget, the final re reading approving the tax rule and levying taxes, and then the final reading setting a tax rate. At this point, I'd be happy to answer any questions related to any of those tax rate, tax roll, or tax levy. Thank you, Ms. Bernard. We covered a lot of that here in the workshop. Council, do you have any questions for Ms. Bernard? All right. There being none, then I'll entertain a motion on item number five. And council, you have the recommended language at your seat. Second. We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem uh, Morales. We have a second by Council Member Williams. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item five passes four votes to zero. Moving on to um, item six, seven, and eight, I'll now open the public hearing for these three items. Uh, if you would, please, if you have any comments, please step to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Or raise your hand on the virtual platform. Nothing on the platform, nothing from the audience. Um, I will close the public hearing on item number six, seven, and eight. Moving on to item number seven uh, for the vote is, um, I'll entertain a motion on item number seven. And again, you have, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, you don't either. So uh, I'll entertain a motion on item number seven. Motion to approve item seven. Second. I have motion by council member Walker and a second by council member Williams. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item seven passes four votes to zero. Moving on to item number eight. Um, I'll entertain a motion on that item. You do have recommended language at your seat. Mayor, I move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 64 cents, which is effectively a 5.090% increase in the tax rate. Second. Okay. Have a motion by council member Williams on item number eight. We have a second by council member Walker. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item eight passes four votes to zero. Moving on to item number nine, which is the consent agenda. Um, all items listed under this section are, are considered to be routine by the city council and may be enacted by one motion. If discussion is desired by the council, any item may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any council member and will be considered separately. Um, during workshop, we discussed removing item M from the consent agenda. So council, is there anything else that you would like to remove for further discussion? All right. There being none, then I'll entertain a motion on consent agenda items 9A through 9P minus item M. Mr. Mayor, I move uh, adoption of the consent agenda item 9A through 9P minus item M. Second. 
have a motion by council member Walker and a second by mayor pro tem Morales. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item 9A through P minus M passes four votes to zero. Move on to um, item M, which is to consider adopting a resolution authorizing the city manager or the director of finance to act on behalf of the city to review pricing officers offers submitted for the supply of electricity. And if in the best interest of the city enter into a contract with the lowest responsible bidder for a period of up to 10 years beginning uh, for electricity meters read after April, 2024. Council, this is the, uh, the item that was requested to table. I'll entertain a motion on item 9M. Motion to table item 9M. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Walker, a second by Mayor Pro Tem Morales. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item M is passed with a vote of four to zero. Moving now to the regular agenda is the first reading in a public hearing to consider adopting an ordinance authorizing a city initiated rezoning from agriculture to urban estate zoning district on point 934 plus or minus acres located at 8640 Prairie View Road in Temple, Texas on the north side of Prairie View Road between Honey Hill Drive and North Pea Ridge Road. Mr. Chandler. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Well, this zoning case, you can see on the left the vicinity map uh, where it's located along Prairie View and then an aerial uh, to the right. And so this is 0.934 acres and uh, is a non-conforming lot within the existing ag zoning district, uh, primarily due to right-of-way acquisition for Prairie View Road project. So this is a city-initiated rezoning to bring the lot into compliance uh, and urban estate is the uh, most appropriate zoning district uh, as determined by staff. There's an existing residential driveway that would allow access onto Prairie View. And so uh, when we look at the comp plan, comprehensive plan, it's uh, consistent with residential and neighborhood service uh, designation within the future development plan, uh, thoroughfare plan, Prairie View Road is a minor arterial and uh, related to the improvements that were completed in spring of, of 2020, uh, the driveway is still in existence and so would allow connection uh, to Prairie View Road and Trails Master Plan uh, shows a, a thoroughfare connector trail on Prairie View Road. And of course, that was included within the Prairie View Road project. So just in this table, the comparison of the agricultural zoning district to urban estate, you can just see the, the difference in the minimum uh, square footage for the lot, an acre for ag and a half acre for urban estate. And so thus the city and issue rezoning, bringing it to compliance. And so you can look at the, the zoning, here's the site. And so notices were sent out to 14 property owners within 200 feet. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning and so did planning and zoning by a vote of eight to zero at their July 6th meeting. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Chandler. Council? It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, this uh, item, item number 10, is subject to a public hearing. Uh, if you wish to speak on this matter, please raise your hand on the virtual platform or step to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Very good. There being none, then I will entertain a motion on item number 10. Motion to approve item nine is read in by Mr. Chandler. Second. Second. Are we on item nine or 10? 
It's item 10. Sorry. You're going to approve item 10? Say this, okay. <laughs> I do approve item 10, please. Very good. Second item 10. All right. And I've already voted. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. All right. I have a motion by Council Member Walker. I have a second by Mayor Pro Tem Judy Morales. Wendell's already voted. So the rest of the council, if you would please vote. Item number 10 passes four votes to zero. Moving on to item number 11 is the first reading in a public hearing to consider adopting an ordinance approving a rezoning request from Agriculture District to Single Family One on 23.133 plus or minus acres located at 6190 Hartrick Bluff Road. Mr. Chandler. All right, thank you, Mayor. So here's the location of the site along Hartrick Bluff. And it's north of FM 93 and mm -hmm. just east of Friars Creek. And there is an existing home on the 23 acre site. Uh, and this site is also adjacent to the master preliminary plat of Highland Park Estates, which would include a uh, community collector connecting from Partridge Bluff through this development and then ultimately through Highland Park Estates and more to come on that. And the final street alignments and of course the, the lot layout would be determined during the platting process. And so the future development plan also shows this area as residential and neighborhood service. And this is compliant with that request. And uh, zoning map, you can see a lot of green, a lot of agricultural zone property along the corridor, but to the west, you can see uh, single family one, which is consistent with this request and consistent with the Highland Park Estates uh, development to the west of it. And so on the thoroughfare map, you can see the uh, proposed community collector that ultimately would connect to a uh, neighborhood collector within the Highland Park uh, Estates neighborhood and ultimately would provide connectivity to 31st Street. And so here's where that, uh, that road stubs out in the Highland Park Estates preliminary plat. And just a reminder that Hartrick Bluff is a funded uh, TCIP project. And so this is the map provided by uh, the project manager for that, just to remind you that there will be higher Hartrick Bluff improvements. And this uh, entrance to this neighborhood would um, uh, be across from the Windham Hill Parkway, which you can see on the map. So kind of at the uh, southern end of the yellow phase. Either way, uh, looking at potential construction in early uh, FY22. Whoops, what was that? And so a reminder just about what that street cross section looks like. Uh, it'll match the, uh, the new straightened version, improved version of Partridge Bluff. I'm sure you all been down there, uh, successful. Uh, rerouting and, and straightening for safety along the Friars Creek uh, landing subdivision under construction to the north of here, but will include a three lanes and an eight foot uh, sidewalk on the east side. And so 21 notices were sent out to property owners within 200 feet. Two were returned in agreement, uh, and, and that's uh, from the developer of the um, Island Park Estates development to the west, and then one in disagreement with a, a resident along Hartrick Bluff whose backyard backs up to that, and there they live within the Wyndham Hill uh, neighborhood and cited concerns about the, the loss of green space, and you know, I think they enjoy looking out across in their backyard of uh, green space, understandable. So here you can see photos uh, of the site, starting the top left-hand corner, working clockwise. You can see uh, to the east, Wyndham Hill, and to the north, uh, vacant property, and to the south as well. So staff recommends approval of the request to single family one. 
as did Planning and Zoning Commission at their July 19th meeting by a vote of nine to zero. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions for Mr. Chandler on item 11? All right, there being none, then um, I'll open the public hearing on this item. Ask that you please step to the podium and state your name and address for the record or raise your hand on the virtual platform. Nothing. All right, then at this time, I'll close the public hearing. And council, if you don't have any questions, then I'll entertain a motion on item number 11. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval of rezoning requests as outlined in item number 11. Second. I have a motion by council member Williams. We have a second by Mayor Pro Tem Morales. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item 11 passes four votes to zero. Item 12 is the first reading in a public hearing to consider adopting an ordinance authorizing a conditional use permit and site plan for a major vehicle servicing facility on 6.021 plus or minus acres within the I-35 corridor overlay industrial subject district identified as Bell County Tax Appraisal District Parcel Number 11768 and addressed as 7405 Pegasus Drive, Temple, Texas. Mr. Chandler. All right, thank you, Mayor. And some good news, it's the last time you'll have to see me tonight. <laughs> so, um, of course, Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed this on July 19th, and the applicant for this project is AC Boston. Mr. Boston is, is here in the audience in case you have any questions for him. So this is a six acre uh, tract that is within the I-35 corridor overlay within the industrial subdistrict, And there is an existing uh, trailer storage along the frontage of I-35. And what is proposed is expansion to the rear uh, to have uh, vehicle servicing for trucks and trailers, which requires a conditional use permit within the overlay standards. The Development Review Committee reviewed the site plan on July 6th and no issues were identified. And so, of course, uh, as part of the CUP, a site plan is part of that. And you can see on the right-hand screen uh, the proposed site plan. And you'll also see it includes a new 12,000 square foot building with six bays and office area on the back side. And so, of course, um, I-35 is on the north of this site plan. Uh, <coughs> currently, there's no paving. And so uh, Mr. Boston is proposing to, uh, to provide paving for circulation and parking. Um, also, a proposal to include landscaping to improve the corridor frontage, um, where there really is no landscaping uh, much at all really within that corridor. So that'd be a significant improvement. Um, also a proposal to include uh, some stone on the I-35 facing frontage and then on the Pegasus side, um, a structural awning. And so the zoning of, of course is in the industrial subdistrict as mentioned before, just to show you what that looks like in map form. And the future uh, development plan within the comprehensive plan shows this as regional commercial, which uh, this new use would be consistent with within that designation. There's existing water and sewer, a 10 inch water line in Pegasus, and then the wastewater would be addressed by septic uh, if necessary. And so you can see photos of the current site. And uh, to the west, you have farmland still undeveloped across from Pegasus and you can see what the area properties look like. So four notices representing 11 different properties, uh, but um, multiple uh, properties are under same ownership. We're mailed out to uh, folks within 200 feet. Two notices were returned in agreement, zero in disagreement. And so staff recommends approval subject to the uh, following four conditions. You know, substantial with compliance, uh, substantial compliance with site plan and elevations, 
including the landscape buffer, the paving and the canopy, the new building, uh, compliance with UDC section 5322 related to major vehicle servicing facilities in the UDC that I as a director of planning and development can approve minor modifications to the site plan if needed. And that significant changes would have to come back to PMZ and city council. At the July 19th meeting, Planning and Zoning Commission voted nine to zero to, uh, to recommend approval per staff's recommendation. I'm happy to answer any questions. And once again, Mr. Boston is here in case you have any questions for him. Thank you, Mr. Chandler. Mr. Chandler, could you tell me again, um, the, the brick or the stone that's gonna be three feet high out in front facing I-35? Yes, What, what does that look, is that chain link and then brick on the bottom? No, I'm, or, here, I'll, I'll show you the elevation. I think that's easiest way to explain. So in the, the bottom left-hand um, elevation, just a, a, a three-foot um, wainscot essentially facing that, and, and he'll have fencing. Um, it's not something I mentioned, but it is on the site plan. He's proposing uh, pipe fencing along I-35. Is, is that correct, Mr. Boston? And so something that he has offered to improve the property. Great, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Chandler? All right, at this time, I'll open the public hearing. Um, anyone wishing to speak on this item may do so. Please step to the podium or raise your hand. Nothing on the virtual platform. No one to the podium. Um, then I will uh, close the public hearing and entertain a motion on item number 12, council, unless you have further discussion. Motion to approve item 12. Second. Motion to approve by council member Walker, second by council member Williams. Council, please cast your vote. Item 12 passes uh, four votes to zero. Mr. Boston, congratulations. I know you've been working on that project for a while. We appreciate your efforts with that. Moving on to item number 13, it's a first reading in a public hearing to consider adopting an ordinance authorizing the abandonment and conveyance of 0 0.0611 acres, which is 2,660 square feet, a portion of Avenue C, unimproved public right of way, situated in the CS Masters Survey, abstract number 550, City of Temple, Bell County, Texas. Mr. Mears. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, tonight, I uh, present to you a request to abandon a portion of unimproved right away on Avenue C. The applicant and property owner is Temple I-35 Storage, and this property is located at generally 310 South General Bruce Drive on the interstate. Tonight's the first reading, and then on August 19th will be the second reading. Um, and the applicant is here tonight if you have any questions for him um, at the end of the presentation. Um, they are seeking abandonment of a 0 0.0611 acre portion of unimproved Avenue C. It's located near the old Ralph Wilson Youth Center and along I-35. It was dedicated to the city in 1947 as part of West Side Edition. And pursuant to the local tex uh, Texas Local Government Code, section 272.001B2, it allows us to sell abandoned right away to adjacent property owners for fair market value. And just to kind of orient you, um, the uh, arrow is pointing to where that small little piece of right of way is located. Um, and you can see it also shows the West Side Addition uh, subdivision outline. And you can see when I-35 expanded, it, it took in most of that subdivision. And here is a survey showing that small portion of right of way um, that we're seeking to abandon. Um, so we sent notice to all of our city departments, you took outside the utility providers and to TxDOT. Um, so if you can see on the survey, the hatched area is a TxDOT drainage easement. So we needed to send them notice as well, because you can see it overlaps that area of right of way. Uh, TxDOT did respond with the request or more of a uh, statement, but no improvements can be built in their easement. And then um, Grande and Spectrum um, also said that if 
any of their facilities <laughs> needed to be re relocated, it would be at the property owner's expense. And the property owner, owner was agreeable to those conditions. And so also earlier tonight on your consent agenda, if you'll recall, you also approved a drainage easement on this property that the owner has agreed to convey to the city for our 41st Street wastewater improvement project. And that is that 0 0.0143 acre that you'll see adjacent to that hash mark um, on that survey. That's just a little bit of additional background that you can kind of see there's a lot going on this property um, in that area. Um, and just so that you know that we're in compliance with the Texas Local Government Code, the property owner does own all the adjacent property to the right-of-way, so we can convey it also to that owner. Um, it is unimproved, and uh, we uh, don't have any plans to improve this portion of Avenue C, so we don't need this right-of-way. And the property owner did submit an appraisal to determine fair market value for the right-of-way, and that came in at $1.25 a square foot which comes in at $3,325. Um, and that $1.25 does take in the encumbrances of those existing easements. And we do have adjacent drainage easements to the right of way. And so when we convey it, if, if you approve this tonight, we'll need to retain a drainage easement across the right of way to connect those two um, existing drainage easements. So if, the, uh, if you do approve tonight, we will convey the right of way to to the property owner uh, via deed without warranty. That's generally what we do on abandoned right of way. And so our approval, our recommendation tonight is to approve the abandonment and conveyance of this portion of right of way. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. And like I said, the applicant and property owner is here for any questions for him as well. Thank you, Mr. Mears. Counseling questions for Mr. Mears? Mm -hmm. um, at this time, I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this item may do so. Please step to the podium or raise your hand on the virtual platform. Very good. There being none, uh, and Council, if there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion on item 13. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Having been a board member of the Ralph Wilson Youth Club for 40 years, I'm glad to second. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Very good. We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Morales. We have a second by Council Member Walker. Council, if you would, sorry, Williams. Um, Council, if you would, please cast your vote. Item 13 passes four votes to zero. To echo what Council Member Williams said. Thank you. Moving on to item 14 is the first reading in a public hearing to consider adopting an ordinance amended by the city's code of, or code of ordinances, chapter 38, water, sewer, and sewage disposal to incorporate a non-substantial modification relating to recovering costs of treating high strength waste to the city's pre-treatment ordinance and program. Mr. Moffitt. Give me mayor and council. Appreciate your time tonight. Uh, this is an amendment um, to chapter 38, to article five revisions and uh, addition of a new article, article number 10. The article number uh, five amendments are essentially removing the surcharge language that exists in the ordinance um, from that location, uh, adjust it as we previously discussed um, to, and moves it to article 10. So it's all in one place. So it's a bit of housekeeping as well. Um, the proposed article uh, 10 is regarding high strength wastewater. Um, we wanted to develop a rate structure that more, you know, equitably applied the uh, cost for high um, strength wastewater. So there was a formula we, we presented where the surcharges only apply to the amount of discharge that's above residential levels for uh, certain constituents. Um, and um, this, this just helps with the industrial uh, rate pairs and everything just kind of evens that out, makes it a little bit more fair. Um, so there's a formula that uh, takes all that into account. Uh, some other changes that it, that it uh, does is it uh, outlines how the surcharges are calculated in terms of testing, um, the termination of surcharge fees. There's a portion in there that allows for an appeal of an analytical, analytical data, say um, 
because we take the analytical data to calculate the surcharges. Say for some reason, a, a company had something going on funding when we took the samples. And so the readings were out of just really high or something like that. They could you know, explain to us, hey, we had uh, this equipment broke. So that's why our readings were high in this instance. Can we retest and then recalculate the fees? So that's in there as well. And um, that's subject to city approval, but um, that is in there just in case. Um, and then enforcement is outlined in there and it's treated kind of like a utility bill it's, kind of, it's essentially what it is. Um, so it's outlined in there that those same, um, the same rules apply. So the goal of this is to protect our wastewater treatment plants to ensure that the capacity that's there uh, lasts a long time for the city. Uh, our hope with uh, the surcharges is that we'll never have to charge them. Hopefully this will encourage um, our wastewater uh, dischargers to cut their cut their um, discharging to residential level so we don't have to charge them. So that's a quick overview of it. I'm happy to go into any more detail if you need me to. Thank you, Mr. Moffitt. Counseling questions for Mr. Moffitt? All right, I'll open the public hearing. Um, if you wish to speak on this item, please step to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Uh, there's no one on the virtual platform, no one from the audience. So, Council, if you don't have further discussion, I'll entertain a motion on item number 14. I move. Go ahead. Motion to approve item 14. I will second it. I have a motion by Councilmember Walker, a second by Councilmember Williams. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item 14 passes four votes to zero. Moving on to item 15, it's a first reading in a public hearing to consider adopting an ordinance setting the conditions for receiving certification and other additional payments for police officers and repealing several ordinances related to setting the conditions for receiving certification, other additional payments for police officers and replacing with the single consolidated and updated ordinance. Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. Council, this item obviously addresses additional payments or ad pays for uh, police officers. Chapter 143 of the Texas Local Government Code or the Civil Service Statute provides that council may, but doesn't have to authorize payments in addition to a police officer's base salary for things like specialized assignments, uh, field training officers, certifications that they hold, educational attainments, physical fitness, and shift differentials. Currently, we have three ordinances that address these ad pays. Uh, there was an ordinance council passed in 2001 that uh, authorized certification pay for, off for officers who hold TCOL certification at the intermediate, advanced, and master's level, CPR certification from the American Heart Association. Uh, it also provides for educational incentive pay for officers who hold 30 qualifying semester hours from an accredited institution, a bachelor's or a master's degree. It provides additional pay for field training officers who are performing specific duties as field training officers training new officers. And shift differential pay for officers that are specifically assigned to work a shift, the majority of which falls between the hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. Two additional ordinances that were passed in 2017 pursuant to the 2018 meet and confer agreement. Uh, 4862 amended the educational incentive payments. They increased those payments pursuant to that agreement. And 4877 authorized language certification pay. That is for officers who pass a specific online test proving that they can speak, read, and write Spanish. And when they, well, if they pass the test, they receive the, the additional pay. They serve as interpreters. Importantly, these, these ordinances prohibit, uh, allow these pay, payments for probationary officers. They're not eligible to, to receive any of these ad pays. And the payment amounts in the ordinances currently are specified. So those monthly payment amounts are laid out in the ordinance. The proposed ordinance would consolidate these three existing ordinances. Um, they would the proposed ordinance would reference the civil service pay charts, which are updated every other year pursuant to the pay study. Um, and it would, it would reference the pay charts rather than putting the individual amounts so that the ordinance doesn't have to be updated every time those amounts change. 
It also incorporates changes uh, that were made pursuant to our 2021 meet and confer agreement. Importantly, we have agreed or the, the agreement provides that probationary officers who have completed their field training and are working alone and work one of the evening or midnight shifts would be eligible to receive payment, shift differential payment for that work. And it updates some terminology. So the certification pay in the old ordinance, the existing ordinance uh, references TCLOS, which has changed its name to TCOL. Uh, field training officers' duties have been updated, and the language describing the shifts that are eligible for shift differential doesn't specify the time. It, it references evening and midnight shifts. The staff does recommend um, adopting the ordinance as proposed, and Chief Reynolds and I are here to answer questions of that. Rodriguez. <clears throat> At this time, I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on item 15, please step to the podium to state your name and address for the record or raise your hand on the virtual platform. There being none, I will close the public hearing. Council, if no further discussion is desired, I'll accept a motion on item 15. I do have a quick question, just out of curiosity. How long are the officers on probation? Thank you for the question, Mayor, Council Members, Chief Sean Reynolds, Temple Police Department. It really depends on if they're coming in as a lateral or if they're in a brand new hire. So it can be anywhere from 12 to 18 months. Okay. All right. Thanks, Chief. You bet. Very good. Anything else? All right. I'll accept a motion on item number 15. I make a motion to approve as presented. Second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Judy Morales. We have a second by Council Member Walker. Council, if you would please cast your vote. Item number 15 passes four votes to zero. Uh, it is 6.04 p.m.